All right, and to continue on with our uh, like our primary uh, quarantine COVID nineteen learning options for uh, kids and parents, essentially just kid friendly, getting their minds engaged rather than sitting watching video games and uh, TV and whatnot while they're locked in and schools out we're going to go ahead and start building out 3d landscapes and you can make stuff like this uh now this is one that i just made on a live stream uh if you want to follow the channel and uh participate in live streams that was my first one it was mostly a test and uh i, <laughs> I had to work out a few things i don't know if the audio is going to work and apparently the resolution wasn't really high uh but in any case this is what i made I kind of just walked through it and made a, a different one as well. It's about an hour and 17 minutes. Uh, so it's quite a long one, but this is what we made in the end. So if you want to be able to make something like this, or you want your kid to be able to make something like this, this is how we do it. And now it does look like it's going to be quite a hassle to do, but it's not, trust me. We're actually going to start fresh, and we're going to start over with a new setup. So these are just a canyon, two canyon walls with a little river going between, and the river is not in there. This program does show water, but I don't have it formed yet. Um, but again, we can just visualize this as a river. And if we wanted to, I guess I could, could show you the water. So here we have water. Go ahead and turn the water on, and then we can increase the water level. I can't remember how. There we go. It's coming in right here. You can kind of see it coming in. right there let's increase it a bit more that's too much there we go so now we got like a river there all right so let's go ahead and we'll start from scratch and you can see the water even moves nice we'll start from scratch so we'll go to Gaia so if you followed my uh, my first video regarding this series uh, I showed you the community version of Gaia that is very important for you to download because we're going to need it to uh, do what we're going to do here. So we'll do new. And Gaia, again, like most 3D programs, comes with a um, a preview right here of, you know, just like some basic stuff that you can do. Uh, it's not going to show for us because we have the water turned on. So let's turn that off. And there we go. What's nice is you don't have to get confused on where you sit when you're looking at your landscape because in newer versions of Gaia, you have this north arrow that tells you which way is north uh, in relation to your landscape. So that's nice. All right. So by default, you have three nodes, and Gaia will open up with these unless you tell it otherwise. Uh, these three nodes. We have mountain, which by default just looks like this. Then a very slight uh, filter, uh, which is displace which just kind of warps it a little bit. And then erosion, which erodes the landscape. It gives it a little bit more detail, a little bit more character. However, we're going to do something very different and probably uh, probably a little bit more fun. So uh, you, we deleted those. So you can see we still have it up here. That's because we need to put another node down here for it to refresh. Um, so let's go ahead and throw in, like I stated in our live stream, one of the most basic and fundamental of all landscape or pretty much anything in 3D is controlled with noise. And noise can be made in a billion and one different ways. Uh, but the most, uh, the, the most common way is to use what's called Perlin. And Perlin was created with, by a really smart man with the last name of Perlin. <laughs> so... Uh, it, that's why it's called Perlin. So uh, we're going to go ahead and throw in a Perlin noise, and that's what we get. And if you go outside and look out your window right now, if you're surrounded by mountains, that'll be even easier. But your mountains, if, if we were living in a 3D world, will most likely be created with Perlin noise. If you look at uh, water, like during a rainstorm where there's a lot of wind, most likely you'll be using something like Voronoi noise, which is right here. Something that is more of a pattern. Or, in some cases, we'll be using, you, in nature, you'll have a combination, so use a combine here, of multiple different noise patterns to get what we see. And in the case of some of the more 
alpine-esque mountains that are really steep and have really sharp slopes, this is what you'll see. A mixture of Perlin and Voronoi noise to create this. So this is Perlin, regular. Looks pretty cool. Lots of cool mountain-esque features. Then we have Voronoi, which is a cellular, braked, broken up, not braked, <laughs> broken up pattern of noise. Sorry if there's a lot of pop. My pop filter broke. I am waiting on a new one. And then uh, they're both really good in their own right, but they're better when we combine them together. Just kind of weld them together, marry them or something. And this is what we get. A mixture and we're blending them and we have different methods of blending and these are all very common to find in uh, graphics uh, the graphic industry the motion graphic industry the 3d industry these are all very common options to choose from and uh, we can blend based on a ratio so the ratio will just be like how much does one take over the other or are they both blended equally so there's a one-to-one -one ratio it's about a 50% blend, one to one. Or we can have a two to one. So if we wanted one to come over more than the other, we just drop this by maybe 25%. And now we have a two to one ratio where we still have a blend between Voronoi and Perlin, but now more of our Voronoi noise is coming in. If we wanted it on the other side, we can increase it as well. We'll do about 75. And now we have more of our Perlin noise coming in rather than our Voronoi noise. And if we increase it all the way, now we don't have any of our Voronoi. And if we decrease it all the way, we don't have any of our Perlin. So about 50-50 is pretty good. All right, so that's cool and all, but it still looks uh, it looks a little bit clunky. We want it to be more of a mountain, just a single mountain. I mean, you can have whatever you want. Don't let me limit what you want, but what I envision for this tutorial will be just a single mountain. So we're going to go ahead and take this output, click it, hold down your mouse button, and drag. And that'll open up this submenu for you. And here it'll have a couple things. Things that you favorited. Uh, your portal options, which we, those are... We can go into those a little bit later. And then we have our suggested nodes, and these are going to be nodes that you've recently used or that you use often. In this case, none of those showed up, but we still want that submenu up because up here it says type or start typing to search. If you look for zero edge or zero borders, sorry, zero borders, it will create the zero borders node and automatically attach it. And now we'll have something like this. So we went from this to this. Now we have these really cool looking features. We have um, these kind of valley look going through our mountain. Uh, but now, unfortunately, we have this appearing. It just looks very circular and unnatural. And you can change the margin. And this is something that looks more like a little uh, spike. Uh, or you can decrease the margin to bring in your mountain a little bit more. However, we're still stuck with this odd shape. So let's instead of using the mode square, let's go to round. And round gives us a much more flowy, fall off look, <coughs> sorry, look instead of that really harsh uh, uh, line around our mountain that we were seeing. Let's go ahead and uh, play around with this so let's increase the power and why we want to increase the power is because we want to bring in if we decrease it, it's going to be super spiky we don't want this super spiky look because it doesn't look very natural does it so if we increase the power we'll get rid of that spike but we'll retain some of our fractal noise it's really nice and then we can change the iterations and what the iterations will do is kind of applying this over and over and over again, the zero borders over and over and over again on our landscape. And the more iterations you have, the more it applies, and then the smaller our landscape gets, which can be good in some options, but in this case, we, we're losing that mountain feel. So let's go ahead and decrease the iterations. We do want it to be applied a couple times, but uh, not that much. 
three seems to be good. So this is awesome, but you'll notice that we went from having a lot of cool noise detail in our fractals to having very little. And if we go back to our Voronoi, we don't really have to change much in here because there's already a lot happening. And in our Perlin, we don't have to change a lot because, there, again, there's really a whole lot happening. So what we want to do is if we want to bring in the details that we lost after using our zero borders that we had originally in here, all we need to do is we need to set up a, another combine node. So let's go ahead and combine things together. And we'll take the output of our combine here and plop it into the combine there. Now it's going to look weird at first, but that's okay. I'm going to move these around so they're easy to see, but we don't want to get lost in translation here. You can combine pretty much any node together to do whatever you want. And the best way to go about learning what to combine and when and what method to use is to just play around with it. And I've spent hundreds, if not thousands, if not close to tens of thousands of hours in 3D programs. It, it takes some time, but in all actuality, Gaia makes it super easy. So we have our zero borders here. We lost our detail. Now we want to add that detail back into our landscape. So we took the combine and we put it through another combine node here. And now we want to do something to bring in the detail. We'll have to change the method. So let's go ahead and click on blend, de-click, but keep your mouse hovered over. And let's use our arrow keys and we'll just go through the methods by using the up and down arrow keys on our keyboard. So with blend, this is what we get. And this is at a 50-50 ratio. With add, we do add in the detail again. We get our point peak back, but we still keep the edges, which we don't want. Screen does about the same thing almost, but uh, not to as great of an extent. Um, subtract, we'll subtract pretty much everything out of our original landscape. We don't want that. Multiply seems to be doing what we want to do. Let's keep looking. Divide is doing all right. It does keep the edges down, but we lose a lot more of our detail. We don't want that. Max doesn't do what we need at all. <laughs> uh, minimum might actually work well. We'll keep that in mind. Square root, no. Power, no. Difference, no. All right. So the ones that we had was minimum and multiply. And if you look at these two, they're slightly similar, but they're not necessarily the same. Let's go ahead and increase our ratio to 100. And you'll see with multiply, we brought back the detail back in. So that's what we had before. That's what we have now. We brought back some of that detail, but it kind of shrunk our landscape. Let's go back to subtract. This, no, minimum, sorry, minimum. And this is what we have now at 100% ratio compared to what we had before. They're exactly the same, right? So we don't want minimum because if we want to use minimum, we're not going to bring in any detail. That's our zero borders without. If you just click on any of these nodes, it'll change to that view with zero borders and with it being combined does nothing, especially at zero. And if we decrease this, it's not going to do much for us either. So let's go back to multiply. Let's increase the ratio to 100. That'll bring in the detail. Now each node has its own sub options. And when I say sub options, they're just options that are available everywhere else inside of here. So filters and adjustments and whatnot, mostly uh, just adjustments, not filters, sorry, adjustments. But you can make those adjustments on each node without having to apply another node out here in your graph, making it super cluttered and confusing. And to do that, you just click on combine. And down here in the corner, these are your sub options. If you click on the three button, uh, three dot button here, you have all of them listed here for you. Now by defu de <laughs> default, influence is going to be selected. However, we want to bring in more of our zero borders with the detail. A good way to do that is to use an auto level or an equalize. 
auto level will just auto level it and now you can see really spiky landscape uh, but we brought in a lot of our detail but now it's too much we can apply another one let's go ahead and try out bias and gain and bias and gain I can go into the details of why they are called bias and gain but essentially it, if you take black and white and you put them together and you throw what we call a mask on it to mask out certain areas where some parts will be black and some parts will be white it increases the contrast between those two colors and changes whatever it is you're working on to match whatever it is you're changing so in this case if we increase the bias it's not really going to do much because it's being auto leveled let's look at the gain now it should have some of okay there we go We'll decrease the influence <laughs> there we go all right so decrease decrease the influence um, and then play around with the bias and gain here i don't think they're actually going to do much in this case because of the auto level so if we want to turn auto level off we can play with bias and gain there we go let's keep the influence high so we can see what's happening so if we take this back to zero by default uh, you'll see it's really super flat. So let's play around with the bias. That's going to keep it. It's going to bring it in a bit more, but it's not going to bring it in enough, and that's actually close to uh, zero. So let's, uh, at some point, you're going to start clipping. That's another term. Clipping your um, your settings here, and they're not going to work for you just kind of have to play with it so bias and gain might not be the best option in this case so let's go ahead and turn that off and let's throw auto level back on so that'll give us this and then we'll just decrease the influence quite a bit until we find something we like so maybe 10 percent there we go cool all right so we have a really cool looking mountain peak we went from this with a little less detail to about what we had before, but with more detail. Even if it's just a little bit, a lot, a little bit of extra detail here and there goes a long ways. All right, next is the last one, and this is where a lot of fun comes in. I could play with these settings forever, but we're going to use erosion to erode our landscape. And erosion occurs naturally in uh, in nature. And there's a whole bunch of different types of erosion. We have fluvial erosion, we have thermal erosion, we have wind erosion, um, and you know we just ha we have even uh, um, freezing like erosion that's based on uh, the freezing and thawing of ice uh, in glaciers and whatnot, gl glacial erosion. Uh, and so in this case, uh, our hydro erosion even, I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on. There's a whole bunch of different types. So in this case, we're just going to throw on what's called a basic erosion node. This simulates uh, your basic fluvial erosion where uh, it rains uh, and over a long time span. That rain uh, starts breaking up rock and carrying sediment from the top of wherever the location is to the bottom, and you'll see it right here. You have these little flow lines. These flow lines are fluvial lines, and they are created by water coming down over, like I said, a long period of time and collecting towards the bottom of the landscape. And those are called deposits, uh, uh, sedimentary deposits to be exact. And you'll notice that this erosion has a couple different outputs on it. We have wear, which is um, uh, the wearing of the stone and the landscape from the erosion the deposits where all of that erosion deposits at and then the flow which are these flow lines we don't have to worry about those right now because those it gets a little bit more intricate but we don't have to worry about it in this case all we're going to do is just apply the erosion and leave it there are a lot of different options in here and the erosion node itself can take up maybe one or two videos to explain what's happening but essentially, don't get lost in the details. You don't have to worry about it. Because by default, Gaia was made to be artist friendly. So what that means is that an artist can come in here, quickly put something together, and call it good. 
without having to change a lot of settings. And that's one of the major issues in the 3D industry is getting a program and being inundated, just having so many options to choose from that you don't know what to do. And then you lose interest because you get lost. In this case, you don't have to worry about it. When you are comfortable, you can go ahead and just start playing with all these different options on your own. Uh, but I will be making videos on what they are. But for the time being, you don't even have to worry about it. This program was literally made for people who don't have um, all the time in the world to be looking up what every setting does in the program they get. And there's actually a rule called the 80-20 rule. You'll only be using about 20% of any program you buy or any program that you're in. You'll only be using about 20% of it. And you'll be using the same 20% over and over and over again. And that other 80% is stuff that you don't use or don't use often. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. This is what we'll be left with. And voila, you have created a mountain. Now yours will be different from mine because every node has what's called a seed. And that seed is seen right here. Every node, except for the combined nodes. But every node, essentially pretty much every node, has a seed. And that seed, all it does is it randomizes your landscape. So you have this, right? So say this is what we have for our Voronoi. If we were to click on the seed, bam, we have something different. Same thing with the Perlin. Go ahead and click on the seed. Now we have something different. That's all it does. And of course, that's going to uh, make our end result look different as well. So you can literally get hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of different variations of your landscape with just playing with the seed. Um, another way to do this, though, is um, Gaia actually has what's called mutations. So select all your nodes by clicking and dragging over all of your nodes and selecting them, and hit this button right here. These are your mutate nodes button. And it just randomizes all the seeds that you have in your node graph. And it'll just tell you, hey, this is what you're doing. Are you sure you want to do it? Yes. And it goes through, randomizes them all, and then spits out the final version right here. So there we go. So you don't have to go through each node individually. So you can literally just follow along with this and select all of them, hit that mutate button. And if it does get stuck after it mutates and it doesn't update here, just click on one node and then click on the last node and it'll update. Super easy. But literally, that's all you have to do. Just, uh, you have, like I said, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, or even more, almost inf an infinite amount of different possibilities you can make just with playing with the seeds. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope if, if you are a parent watching this and you're following along and you have a kid, I hope your kid's enjoying it. I, uh, mine, uh, she gets kind of bored. She's six years old, though, so, I mean, she her attention span's already short. But I hope you have a kid who's finding this fun and always wanting to get into 3D, and I hope this is helping them. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, if you want to recommend something, please go ahead and do that, and I'll see if I can get to it, and I will see you in the next one.